Hey folks, welcome back. This is the follow-up video to the acid and base reaction of, of halogenation on a carbonyl. My thought for the day is this. You know, I understand skillet is a quasi-Christian quasi rock metal band, but they're really pretty damn good regardless of any of that. All right, so I think I left you... Oh golly, I forget what it was. Let's do this one. Here we go. We'll do this. Acetophenone. When we react this with excess Br2 and excess KOH, sorry I had those in the wrong order, but it doesn't really matter. They go in at once. Here's what you get. the carboxylate and bromoform. I actually have a bottle of bromoform in my lab. It is shockingly heavy. I also had once had a bottle of carbon tetrabromide that people wouldn't be able to pick up. Not that it was that heavy, but they just didn't anticipate it weighing as much as it did. So, let's take a look at this, the carboxylate here, how this happens. This is a subset of what we were talking about previously with bases polyhalogenating all the available spots. So, this only occurs with methyl carbonyls. So anything that has a CH3 off of one side of the carbonyl can do this. So let's take a look. We're going to kind of blow through the mechanism a little fast here because it's not that different from what we just did. Pull off the proton. Enolate. You've noticed I've gotten kind of fast and loose with the reversible arrows. That's because that officially falls under the category of things that I really don't care about that much. So we monobrominate. So we're here. Now, this will happen twice more until we are at this juncture. I'm sorry, my computer decided to make a lot of noise at that moment. There's no more spots to halogenate here. So instead, the base is going to do this. It's going to attack the carbonyl carbon and open up the carbon-oxygen pi bond. Now, this happens whether we want it to or not, really. That's not an OH, that is an O. And this is the OH. We reform the pi bond and knock the CBr3 off. Very rarely will I tolerate any of you kicking a carbanion off of a molecule. But here, I'll accept it. Because this carbon with a negative charge has halogens attached to it, three of them actually, pulling that electron density away and thereby stabilizing it. Finally, we re deprotonate. The anion is not that stable. It pulls the proton off of the carboxylic acid, and what we get is this. The carboxylate salt and bromoform. Now, if this is a why do we care about this big deal, I don't like you anymore, Dr. Weagle sort of situation, let me just give you really quick why this once was very important. 
Before the advent of spectroscopy, when we can now take a sample, we can do four different spectroscopic analyses on it, do an hour's worth of problem solving, and you know the structure, entire careers were made out of identifying the structures of molecules. This was once a test. It was called the bromoform test. And what would happen is you would take your unknown sample, you would put it in a concentrated solution of potassium hydroxide and bromine. If you shook it, heated it a little bit, and if there was clearly a phase change, that is, you got a different phase forming at the bottom, that meant you had an alpha bromo excuse me, an alpha methyl carbonyl. If it didn't and everything stayed in one phase, then you don't have that. So you would do that for an unknown sample to see if there was an alpha, me alpha methyl in there. So let's move on from bromination and then let's talk about alkylation via enols and enolates. So let's go ahead and take a look at this then. We'll take a look at what happens with our friend acetaldehyde. And let's say NaH and then one bromo propane. Here's the product. One, two, three. Where this is added here. All right. Now let's do show the mechanism for that. The hydride is going to yank the proton off of the enolate, send it up there. So you've got this, not that, sorry. This and here, reform the pi bond. Nucleophilic attack on that carbon, break open the carbon bromine bond, and you get, well, you get to there. Okay, can you do this again if you so choose? Yes. In fact, you can make this asymmetric if you want to. So I'm going to see if I can fit this in up here at the corner, you know, save some paper. Let's say we do this one NaH. Actually, we don't need the one there at all. No, crap. Sodium hydride with, oh, let's go with one bromopropane again. And we get that. Pentanyl. All right. What if we want to alkylate it with something different? Well, that's a fair question. Sodium hydride again, and one bromo pentane. Here's what your product would be. You would get that branched aldehyde. Now, could you press on again if you really wanted to? Yeah, you know, we still have one more proton left on this carbon, but sterics are getting pretty ugly around there. So most of the time, we don't even worry about that. Two is about as far as you can realistically get in a situation like that. All right, that is alkylation. A couple notes for it I'd like to make. One, this is always SN2. So you are limited to primary or methyl alkyl halides. That's it. You can't do secondaries, well, maybe on a good day. And tertiaries, no. Those will definitely eliminate first because, believe it or not, the enolate is a strong base. 
All right, so then let's look at this, because this is a question that I've been getting a lot. My favorite ketone, methyl ethyl ketone. One, because it's fun to say, and two, because it's heavily used in the polymer industry. What you'll notice here is there are, in fact, let me do this right. There are two protons available for removal. And the key to understanding which one will be used goes back to my rule about what's the question. So this way, if you have a base, this is the enolate you would form. And this way, theoretically the same hypothetical base you get this enoid. So the question becomes, which one will predominate? I'll be honest with you. These reactions are usually not choosy enough to guarantee one over the other. We could discuss sterics. We could discuss um, stability of the enoid. I'm going to tell you right now, and this may be a gross oversimplification, but I feel like you guys are due some of those with everything that's been going on this semester. This will be the primary enolate formed because the carbon-carbon pi bond is more substituted. So this would be the enolate you would use, regardless of the base, that would go on to do further reactions. Now, if I usually what I do is I ask for the major organic product. In that case, you would most certainly go with the more substituted enolate than the blue. If, however, I ask for all products, you would go with the red option and the blue option for the reaction. Understanding the red option is probably going to be a fairly minor contributor to your final mixture. All right, that winds us up. I'm at 1225. Actually, I'm going to do one more really quick. What about this, this diketone? Well, you know that this proton is pretty easily removable, pKa of negative, I'm sorry, not that, whoops, pKa of about 9. So hydroxide can pull that off. And you're here. I've been asking a lot of people to do this on stuff where this is a ring. And a lot of you still aren't getting it. So we will start the next video with that. Have a good day, folks.